Colin Fry is a well-respected psychic and medium. He's got his own TV shows, and he made some appearances on Blackpool's North Pier over the summer. And we went along to find out exactly what goes on at one of his demonstrations. Now, for somebody who may not have seen you on the television or seen you live before, what goes on at one of your um, demonstrations? Well, the first thing I would say, there's, there's nothing scary about it. You know, I quite often joke and say, anything scary happens and I'm going to be the first one out the door. Um, it's, it's just a really nice opportunity for people to feel connected to those people that they've known that have, have passed over. Um, you know, they might be one of the ones that get an individual message. But, you know, there's something in it for everybody. You know, I really try to make the evening something that is a, f- a feeling of feeling, feeling close to those people that have passed over. <laughs> and, and how does it work for you? Do you, can you go out and look for it? Is it something that comes to you? Can you switch on and off? Do you just get vibes from, from, from the, um, <laughs> the atmosphere? Well, you know, I, I coined a phrase a few years back, you know, what everybody else calls the paranormal is my normal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know any different. Um, and I used to say to people, oh, yeah, you know, I switched it off and everything. But you never completely switch it off. You know, there's always something going on in the background. I think, you know, part of the discipline of working as a medium is the fact is, is, is knowing when not to work with it. You know, it's like you have to have a part of your life that is, is, is separate um, from all this. You know, it's like... Um, so that means that, you know, that when you have got to work, you know, with your gift and you've got to work with the public and you've got to try and bring those connections through, you can put, you know, your maximum effort into it and you can put your maximum conviction into it. Um, so, you know, that little bit of my life that is separate from all this, you know, I keep that all very separate and you know, very private. And then, you know, so that I can give, you know, my absolute energy to my, my public work, you know, as a medium. Right. Okay. And is it contact from the other side that comes in this direction or do you get vibes off people in in the living world as well i uh, you, there's a phrase that's quite often used you know all, all mediums are psychic but not all psychics are mediums mm-hmm. and so that means that sometimes when i am working with an audience i do get things that come through just on the psychic level not on the mediumistic level but what i do is i try to point it out to people this is something that's happening psychically mm-hmm. it's not something that i'm getting as a communication it's something i'm sensing around you or around the environment and so i always try to show people or or to explain to people how i'm getting the information whether it's something through mediumship or something on a psychic level being noisy sorry what i was going to say now um tell us about your new book my new book is called by your side um it's the fourth in my series of books And although all my books stand out as sort of like separate entities in themselves, um, I do have this ongoing theme through my books um, by using stories of messages that I've given and experiences that I've had in my life to get across this overall um, message, and I suppose the whole message of me being a medium, about helping helping people to come to terms with bereavement, coming to terms with people coming... Uh, passing over and you know and how you know if they have the mind that they can seek and they can look for that connection um, with you know friends and loved ones that have passed over was there a defining moment in your life when you decided this is what you had to do um i don't think i really had a lot of choice you know it's you know when you've got that ability you know it's i suppose working on talking on the psychological point of view I suppose if you don't express this ability that you have or find a way of working with it, I suppose it could drive you around the bend. Um, and so I, I subconsciously, I suppose, decided from a very young age that I had to find a way to express this ability that, that I had. Um, I started demonstrating as a medium when I was 17. I actually only went professional about 15 years ago. And I think the defining moment for me was I had a very close friend of mine who became my adopted brother. Um, and I looked after him for the last eight and a half years of his life through a, a, a critical and then what became a terminal illness. And he always used to say to me, and I had a very successful career in retail management, and he used to say to me, you know, yeah, you know, look, you, you, you're doing well with your chosen career, but this gift you have is more important. And I always used to say to him, no, I'm not going to go professional. You know, I'll work in doing demonstrations evenings, weekends, you know, do readings for people when I can. 
and then he part and, and, and I did three tour I did three tours of Australia and toured all around the country you know before I went professional and then it literally was the day he passed away um, he passed away in my arms in, in, in a hospital in London and I just made this immediate decision you know that the best way that I could remember him was to follow what he'd always advised me to do, which was to, to, to turn professional and you know, to go out there and to do the work on a full-time basis. So I suppose that really was the defining moment for me of, of making that decision to go out on a limb. Yeah.